Hey there, I'm sorry about the noise in the background. I hope in the next videos this will be solved. But let's get to the point. The first video is uh, to explain what I'm going to be building in the near future. Uh, the second one will be completely about my design, which you can see on screen. Uh, and this is just an introduction to this project. A long time ago I saw an instructable on a film in Extruder and I was seriously thinking about building one. But I told myself I don't need it and it probably won't be worth it. Recently though, I was in need of a new project and I decided to try to extrude my own filament. I wanted to film these videos and explain what I'm doing step by step because, although I found many videos and several instructables about filament extruders on the internet, I didn't find everything I was looking for, so I'm hoping to be the one who provides all the information and I'll try to make everything as clear as possible. I googled and watched a lot about these filament extruders, mainly DIY ones, and uh, last few weeks I was designing my own. However, I must say I was greatly inspired by several people, so my setup won't be fully authentic, of course. I will talk about the greatest inspirations to me regarding filament extruders later. I have ordered many parts already before filming this video, so I have a pretty good idea about what I'll be doing and how I'll be doing it, but I'm not completely sure about everything. For the ones that don't know how a filament extruder works yet, I'm going to break it to you. As an example I chose the fill extruder and fill winder kit, which you can see on the screen, which looks like this. Most builds of uh, the filament extruders are horizontal, but I found the vertical setup to be theoretically better, and I'm going to build mine vertically too. These two kits are made by a company called Phil Extruder, and they cost about 500 US dollars to get. Uh, you can find them on Phil Extruder site. This is the Phil Extruder kit uh, for 300 dollars. This is just an extruder. You probably want a winder as well. But let's get back. Uh, here you can see a box that probably contains a motor and a gearbox. You don't need a gearbox if your motor is rated at the speed you desire, but if you want to slow it down or the motor doesn't have enough torque, gearbox is the way to go. Mostly you can see windshield wiper motors, for example in this instructable, but stepper motors uh, should do a great job too. When choosing motor you aim for it to have a high torque and low RPM. I will talk about motors in next videos. To the gearbox or to the motor, or auger bit is attached. There are speculations about if the auger uh, drill bit is the perfect choice for this use, but it works relatively well. Feed screw, or what it's called, should be better though. After all, the auger drill bit is made to drill into wood, not to feed plastic pellets. But anyways, you mostly see 16mm auger bits. The way it works is that the auger bit spins in counterclockwise direction, and when pellets fall between the flutes, they are kind of guided to the end of the auger bit. The auger bit is placed and rotates in a metal pipe. Let me show you the auger bit. This is how the auger bit looks. You have many of them on the market. This is exactly what the one I will use, 16 times uh, 460 mm. That is the pipe to which plastic pellets are fed using a hopper, usually through cut out in the pipe. Hopper is the part uh, which you fill with pellets and it usually looks like a funnel. So in this photo this is the hopper and this is the metal pipe. Almost on the end of the metal pipe you have a heating band, sometimes even more than one, and a thermocouple. The heating band heats up uh, the end of the auger bit along with the metal pipe and with it the pellets are heated up too. This makes the plastic pellets so soft, almost liquid, so they can be formed. So in the tube you have the feed section, that's where the pellets are fed. You have some insulation and you have a melt section where the pellets are melted into melted plastic. Then you have the nozzle. That is simply put. Uh, on the end of the pipe you have a nozzle, which is nothing but a small hole through which the molten plastic comes out as a filament. The filament is then winded on a spool and if it is consistent enough, it can be used for 3D printing. This is the spool and the winder, there is a motor turning the spool and automatically the filament is winded on the spool, simply enough. Also, you don't have to use plastic pellets to make filament, but if you can shred your failed prints, rafts or supports, you can make filament from them as well. I suppose you wouldn't get very good results from that, but I was thinking that by shredding the parts, 
extruding what comes out of the shredder, palletizing the extruded filament and extruding it one more time, you could get even better results than with pellets. The filament quality is a bit complicated, but the main features that the filament should have is roundness of a cross section of the filament, consistency in diameter, purity of any other materials such as metal, air bubbles or even water, and structure of the filament. You usually see extruders built horizontally, but I find the idea to build it vertically could make the consistency of the extruded filament a bit better. With a horizontal extruder, you usually have a part that pulls the filament from the nozzle and cooling fans or water bath in the middle. In the setup, gravity could affect the roundness and even the consistency of the filament, but by building it vertically, it is only pulled by gravity, which equalizes the inconsistency between filament exiting the nozzle and filament being wanted onto the spool. However, building it vertically requires more space and if you don't want to drill holes into your walls, you need a huge wooden plate or something to hang the extruder and winder on. Anyways, making it horizontal would keep me up at night, so the decision has been made. Though, I'm thinking about extruding vertically but winding horizontally. I need to think about that a little more, maybe I'll talk about it in the next video. I want to mention several people and channels I got inspired by. Uh, first, the Philostruder company. They did a great job at designing the extruder and the winder and I really like this. Then, Hugh Lyman and Philip Muller did a great job too and they successfully designed a reliable and mostly printed fi uh, filament extruder which you can find online and replicate. On Thingiverse, you can find a user called Geardown for What, who designed several planetary gearboxes, many of them fully printable. I suggest you check them out. I myself will probably print and use one of their designs in my extruder. The next one is a channel called Making Stuff on YouTube, on which you can find videos about building and tuning a filament extruder as well. Also, a guy called Ras has a nice set of videos about his filament extruder. You can find these videos by searching for Russ's Filament Extruder. R-U-S-S. -S. I found his setup very unique and he filmed a lot of videos about it, which I admire. The last channel is a German one called Werbewander. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Unfortunately, most of his videos are only available in German, I mean the language, but there are several with subtitles too. You can find several film and extruders on his channel and many many videos about them and even though I don't understand a thing while watching most of these guys videos, they are very valuable. I'll see you soon, thanks for watching.